What's up, what's up everyone? You know who I am, Jack Slater, aka the Comic Outlaw. And we're visiting the world of Apocalypse. Tales of Apocalypse. Yes, this is the Outlaw's Cut. And this is the X Factor. Yes, in this world, Mr. Sinister had raised two children, Scott and Alex Summers. And this chronicle of them and their adventures with their stepfather, Sinister. As a ship crashes down five years ago, shot down by Apocalypse's troops, for he is the ruler of America, where only the strong survive. As the ship crashes down and is recovered, they find something strange, something human yet alien all at the same time. As the Summers brothers are training, fighting without their powers, learning how to outmaneuver, outthink bigger opponents without having to use their genetic gifts until Alex panics and uses his power. Sinister scolds him. And then Beast walks in, McCoy. He's known as the Beast for his savage experiments. And there is one of them, a man named Corsair, the father of Scott and Alex Summers. As Beast comes in, five years of experimenting on himself, it turned him into a, a creature, the Beast. As he breaks out, Corsair tries to shove a needle in his face and runs out in the confusion. He tells him, dead or alive, bring him back, return him to me. As he goes and he hits Manhattan, he's found that it's changed. It's different, violent, more extreme. As a man takes a swipe at him, thinking he's a thief, Corsair introduces himself explains what happened to him and this man his name is Robbie he used to work for the Daily Bugle and he fills him in on the history of Apocalypse and what had happened meanwhile Sinister gathers everyone together splits them into two teams and basically sends the B team after Corsair to go get him to bring him back dead or alive as Alex and Scott have the night off Alex decides to go to heaven but not the heavenly place you think of, although an angel runs it. This is a retreat called heaven, a place where apocalypse men can go and unwind. While the other squad is looking for him, they find the corpse of Robbie. He's alive and yet not. As he moves again, springing back to life, he is electrocuted, burnt to a crisp. As they look for this man, they find him. And Corsair, knowing that it's survival of the fittest, knowing that he has to fight, to kill, shoots one of them. And these children are stunned. Seeing one of their own die. Killing is one thing, but seeing one of your own crew die in front of you is completely different. As he takes a shot, firing at a tanker, blowing it up, knocking them out. And then he goes in for the kill. The sweet, sweet kill. Meanwhile, Alex is enjoying the splendors of heaven when Scott Summers walks in, tells him that the team has been taken out and he needs him now for this mission. And Scott and um, inebriated Summers, Alex, is looking over the dead bodies of the squad, realizing they've been slaughtered as they go looking for this man. They open the doors and this man takes a shot at them, Corsair, Boom, boom, they introduce themselves. As Alex flings him back with his cosmic power, he's on the run. He stops pulling his sword, wondering if he's gonna survive or they're gonna kill him like the flat scan that he is. He introduces himself, he says that he's their father. And they stop for a minute, wanting to hear this story, wanting to know what happened that night. They were trying to get away from Apocalypse this is when he first invaded and then a ship came upon them they got Scott, they got Alex, put a parachute on them, sent them off. They were captured, experimented on for years. His wife couldn't take the pain, so she died. Corsair escaped. With a bunch of other misfits, they became the Star Jammers. And they started rebelling against Ducat. And then he decided to come here to find his boys, to find his family. But now they're being attacked by scavengers, cannibals. They eat anything and everything they come across. And they are looking at them for lunch. As Scott and Alex begin fighting them off with their powers. 
taking them out one by one as they were trained to do by Sinister. They see another one upon Corsair. He pulls his sword and kills him. Corsair is not a killer, but he's been pushed to it. And now he feels the bloodlust running through him. Something taking over. Cyclops begins to suspect something as Corsair goes on and on, saying that he's their father and he needs their help. Meanwhile, Beast and Sinister are having conversations about Jean Grey being a genetic match for Scott Summers. And Beast brings up the fact they've been experimenting on this man for five years and how would the Summers feel? And he warns Beast never to bring that up again. Meanwhile, Scott and Alex are trying to figure out what they're going to do with Corsair. Are they going to let him go? Are they going to bring him in? There's something about his story that doesn't add up. Something Scott just doesn't trust. Or Alex is willing to trust him. Willing to have his father back, his family. But Sinister has been like a father to them. As he looks around, he finds bodies mangled. Flesh being ripped off. This was a very savage attack. As he finds someone in the dumpster, he wakes this girl up. She thinks they were attacked by the same scavengers that attacked the Summers. And she was thrown in the dumpster for later as she sees the body of her friend, never thinking she was going to outlive her. As they pass her corpse, the eyes open up and suddenly the creature is alive. And meanwhile, Alex is trying to get a bike ready for Corsair to take off. There's something wrong with Corsair. Summer's beginning to suspect as more of these creatures come out of nowhere attacking. They're more than scavengers. They seem sick. Alien. As Scott begins knocking them down one by one, Corsair using his sword, Alex his powers. They kill them. They try to mangle them. As one of the creatures looks at Corsair and recognizes him. As a bloodbath continues, and they begin fighting off these creatures one by one. Scott says for them to fall back. They end up at a cliff, and out of nowhere, a ship comes, and it is Mr. Sinister. He has come to save his adopted sons. He's come to make sure they're safe from Corsair. Scott demanding answers, demanding why they hid his father for all these years, demanding why he was a prisoner as the father turns he has become a member of the brood and all these people he's killed have become broodlings and he is the queen and this creature is completely taken over corsair as it attacks sinister while he's explaining this is why they never let him go or talked about him as he attacks him trying to take him over cyclops blasts the creature back as it attacks alex alex stunned not knowing what to do scott says forgive me as he blasts him into oblivion with his optic blast killing the creature the alien creature the brood that was his father but is no more there was no other way he corsair tells him to be strong stronger than he was and to watch his brother as he fades into the ether alex attacking him saying you didn't have to kill him but Scott saw no other way, and Sinister agrees with him that the strong had survived. And yet, Scott still feels lost, even though he can never talk about it. He did his duty. He did what he had to do, and in the end, only the strong had survived. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah.